I want to talk briefly about how to measure blood pressure and pulse and also why. So I'm actually going to start with why. Um, these two things are going to give you um, function of the heart and in terms of having adequate blood going to all your organs and then also not too much. So the main one that we're, um, referred to here is going to be blood pressure. So um, you probably have heard of hypo and hypertension. Hypotension is low blood pressure. Um, you can measure this with a blood pressure cuff. We'll look at that and kind of a little bit with pulse too. Um, not as nearly as well. Hypotension is low blood pressure. And this indicates that there's not enough um, blood. It's not able to get to your organs. Um, oftentimes, it, this can result in, in fainting. If you stand up quickly, especially, you don't have enough blood going to your brain and your body's response to that is to faint. Guess what? When you're lying on the ground, the blood is going to go back to your brain. Um, it's be able to go to your brain because you're now flat and not working against gravity. Hypotension is low blood pressure, and it's a concern because um, it can result in ischemia, which is low blood flow to the tissues. This is a problem. Another similar but different <laughs> um, thing is hypoxia. Hypoxia is low oxygen levels. Um, we don't have enough oxygen being carried to our tissues. We'll look at this one again when we get to the respiratory system. Um, on the flip side, we can have hypertension. So this is high blood pressure. This is a problem when it's chronic because it causes the heart to have to work a lot harder than it should have to, to um, combat that high blood pressure and the afterload in the aorta, it also can result in damage to the vessels themselves um, due to that, just the pressure, like here's a blood vessel, pressure on that vessel can cause damage, especially if it's um, chronic. So that's why we measure these things. And let's look at how to measure them. You're gonna do these both in lab. First one is pulse. That one's pretty basic. Um, there's different places on your body. This is the most common here. The radial artery is on by the radius of your arm, your, by your wrist, and there's a pulse there. You can find it right now. Um, another one you probably have you know, seen people do is the carotid artery that goes up by your neck. That's a pretty big one there. Um, you may sometimes when you get stressed out, see your temporal lobe here. There's an artery there that I can feel mine. Um, pulses, so various places where pulses are easier to find because that artery can be closer to the surface and um, have a nice strong beat. So pulse can give you a measure of heart rate. The pulse rate tells you heart rate. Uh, and that's probably what you know already, right? It's used to, to measure heart rate. The other thing it can do though is actually an estimate of, of blood pressure. So um, pulse can, can be weak or strong, right? You may have heard those terms. That's different than the actual rate of the heart. That's how strong the pulse feels. Um, so if you can't find your pulse, it might be too weak. <laughs> um, don't, don't get worried. So that's the other thing it does. It's not just measuring heart rate. It's also the strength of that, that beat, which makes sense, right? Okay, um, just to note, this is kind of fun. The, the other things with you may know about measuring heart rate is a heart rate strap, right? That goes around your chest. Um, and also our watches, right? Most of our watches these days can measure heart rate. They actually do this um, by, if you look at your watch, like I've got one here that glows green, it shoots out green, a green beam of light, there it is. And it's flashing off and on. And that actually is sending out um, a signal that then bounces off the red blood cells. So it's actually giving you a measurement of like the red blood cell um, concentration, I guess, that it's, it's reading, absorbance. And that's how it knows as that changes, 
from your pulse, it's able to detect that. So it's actually a fairly indirect measure. It's not as good as like your finger detecting pulse. And that's why these watches tend to be not quite as accurate, especially when you're changing heart rate during exercise. Um, they tend to not be quite as, as accurate as a, a chest strap, for example. Okay, that was a side note. The other thing we wanna talk about is measuring blood pressure. Um, this is a little bit harder to do. <laughs> I mean, it's harder to understand. Um, it's pretty cool, you'll do this in lab. So what we're gonna do is put a cuff, a blood pressure cuff around the brachial artery. This is your brachial artery right here. That cuff is going to get inflated to where it cuts off circulation, meaning blood can't flow through that cuff anymore. That's going to be somewhere above 120 for most people. Oftentimes they just inflate to like, uh, let's say 160, um, well above most people's blood pressure. You then can either listen with a stethoscope and or watch this barometer to see what it does. And you'll do this in lab. Um, but what you're looking or listening for is when the blood starts to flow through. Um, blood flows through at the systolic um, pressure. So if you are 120, if that's your systolic pressure, which is about average, you're gonna start to hear this um, noise and at, at about 120. So you'll hear this in the stethoscope um, and it's actually the turbulence, you're hearing turbulence of that blood hitting against the cuff. It's trying to get through. And since it's, it's able to get through somewhat, it wasn't before, that's that high blood pressure number that you're getting. The person doing this, or sometimes it's a machine, in which case it goes super slow and it is super annoying. I hate the machines. Um, because they go down really, really slow and they're trying to catch the diastolic number next. That's when the, the blood flows freely. So as you decrease the pressure in the cuff, eventually blood can just flow through normally. That's our diastolic pressure. For listening, you're gonna no longer hear turbulence. It goes back to basically inaudible sounds. You're not hearing anything anymore. So, and we'll do this in lab. It'll make maybe more sense then. The last thing I want to talk about is not just the systolic over diastolic that we are getting from blood pressure, but mean blood pressure. And when I say mean blood pressure, that means average, but it's not going to be the average of systolic over diastolic. So let's say this person has 120 over, actually it's 70. This person is, right? 120 over 70. The mean blush, blood pressure isn't halfway in between those. Um, if it was, it'd be maybe easier. Um, it's going to be something closer to this a little bit. Let's look at why. So could you tell me from this figure, why would you not consider the diastolic and systolic pressures equally when you're looking at mean blood pressure? Mean blood pressure, why is it not just halfway in between systolic and diastolic? Well, look at this, this is time, right? So the time in dist diastolic is greater than the time spent in systolic. So we have to consider that. We want the mean blood pressure over time and our hearts spend more time relaxed than they do contracted. Just a little bit more time. Well, it's actually like two to one. So when we go to calculate this, this mean pressure the calculation is actually going to be two thirds times diastolic plus one third times systolic. This equals mean arterial blood pressure. You may also see this, and, and so before I go on, that's because the heart spends about two thirds of the time in diastolic. 
at rest two thirds of time. You may also see, this, see the equation um, in different books written out differently. It's the same thing. So another way of saying this same thing would be diastolic plus one third times pulse pressure. What's pulse pressure? Pulse pressure is the difference between diastolic and systolic. The pressure difference of that pulse. So systolic minus diastolic. So one third times this difference. You actually, if you, if you would like to, if you're a, a math person or this was, makes sense to you, you can put these two equations um, next to each other and solve for one using the other. I'm tempted to do it, but I'll wait. If you, if you wanna see it, I can show you, or you can try to do it yourself. Um, they literally are saying the same thing. It's just a different way of combining um, the, the different values. Okay, so that's gonna give you mean arterial pressure. That's one number. So um, I have you do it at some point, but for now, let's do one. So let's say the person's 120 over 80, systolic over diastolic, two thirds times 80 plus one third times 120. First of all, it's not 100, right? I believe this is 90 or 93, but let me pause a moment. I didn't say 90, it's 93.3. This is this person's mean blood pressure, even though 100 is halfway between their systolic and diastolic. The mean is considering time. And mean arterial blood pressure is a nice one number that can indicate how much blood the tissues are getting over time. Um, so it's important for looking at like ischemia and hypoxia.